Hey, this is Lee from Tillman, and today we're here looking at the Dymo 4XL label writer. Now, this takes the large shipping labels like the Zebra printers, four inch wide, so 159 mil by 104 millimeter labels. This will take. So, known as extra large for Dymo. Once you get it out of the packaging, you've got all the plastic off it. You'll notice it's quite a large power supply. It's larger than the other label riders, so don't get those mixed up if you've got a smaller one. They will plug in, but they aren't the correct size. So make sure you've got the large one for the 4XL. Once you've got it unpacked, you can put some labels in it. So you'll see once you take the label holder out, it's got an arrow on there to show you what way around the labels go. So you're gonna wanna put that on the same way. Close that up, sit it back in the holder, and then you want to feed it through. Now sometimes it'll just grab it, sometimes it won't, so make sure you get it on straight when you put these Dymo labels through. This one's not going to, so we'll use the lever there and just release a bit of tension to get it through, and then press the feed button. It should come all the way through like that. These are perforated labels, so they're very easy to peel off. Just press it one more time. You want to make sure it feeds out the full label like that. That means it's working correctly. If it only feeds out half the label or feeds more than one, it's not detecting the gap, so you'd have to fix that problem first. Could be a label stuck in there or something like that. But this one's now ready to go. So your next point on the journey is to download the drivers for it. So for that, you're going to go to the website dymo.com. Up the top here, you go to resources and guides, and then driver and software downloads. And this top one here, the latest software and drive works for all label writers and label manager. If you've got a Mac, you'd get that one. For Windows, like us, you click that download there. You'll see it starts downloading in the bottom left hand corner. You just click on that, then once it finishes downloading, it will open up and start installing for you. Yes, we do want to do that setup. And English United States is our best choice. Let it do the installing thing. Okay, this is the Dymo Connect installation. We go next there. Yes, we want to accept the terms. Next, and just let it install where it wants to. Just keep going next for the complete. And then install to start the installation. says something's using files that need to be updated by the setup automatically close and attempt to start okay we'll do that setup was unable to automatically close we'll just go okay it was google chrome so it should be able to carry on and do its thing i hope it's probably because i had it installed on here before and then i just uninstalled it to try and be able to make this a bit more like what you'd see Okay, it's done its installing thing. We're going to launch it. We don't need to do the improve. We don't need to send information. We'll launch Dymo Connect though. Click finish. Just because if we launch it, it's actually a good way to check down here and see that it's connected. So see we've got the Dymo Label Writer 4XL. Close that tip so it's brighter. And you can see connected, so we're definitely connected to it, but we're not using this software to print. We're just wanting to print shipping labels. So, oh, the other thing I didn't tell you was that you needed to plug in the USB cable. So you'd normally do that now. I already had mine plugged in, but it's a USB cable, USB B to USB A. So the B goes into the back of the label writer, and this plugs into your computer. Now, if you've got a new Mac or even some of the new Windows tablets, the Microsoft tablet, I think, doesn't use this port anymore. They've only got USB-C. If you've got one of those, you're going to need some kind of an adapter to change it to this sort of port. Um, they don't all work. can be a bit hit and miss with the adapters. The more expensive ones seem to be better. Okay, 
So with that said, we've got our connected, we should be good to go. So if we close this down, we want to go into whatever program that you're using for doing your shipping. So in my case it's eShip using uh, Courier Post. But I do also have Go Sweet Spot. They all work kind of the same way, they produce a PDF. I'll show you what I mean. So if we go into something I've already shipped. And then we go into reprint. You'll see that when it prints, it just produces a PDF here down the bottom. And if we open that PDF, you'll see it looks like the shipping label. So you can use pretty much any 4 inch wide printer to print these out. So once we've got to this far, we go print up on the top corner. We've got our Dymo Label Writer 4XL selected here. And then you're going to need to change the paper size. So the paper size you're looking for is 4 inch by 6 inch. So it's that one there. So choose that. And on the scale, choose fit to printable area. Just to make sure that it fits on there without any overlapping or anything like that. Okay, at that point we go print. And you should see a shipping label come out of your label writer. And there you can see full size 4 inch by 6 inch shipping label to be used with whatever courier that you're using. Cool, if you've got any questions come back to me. I guess the only other thing could be if you want to use the small labels in this as well, you can of course put your 54 by 25s or whatever your standard labels are that you're using in there and when you go to print just make sure that you change that label size to what it is. So if we were printing for example a barcode label now then if we had, I haven't got Shopify open, but if I show you the basic idea, we'll reprint one of these. So we've got something to work with. Okay, so once you had your, if you're in Shopify or whatever, and you had this print screen up ready to do the printing, just make sure you change this paper size here to be the one that you're using. So if it was a 54 by 25 for example, not too sure what the code is for that, but I think it's might be 1 inch by 2 and 8 inch, so 30336 I think. So as long as you change it there, then you should be able to change and print that out as standard barcode labels using the same printer for whatever size you want to use. If you've got any questions, come back to me. Thanks for watching.